Howdy, hi all, Chris here from BlamCon and Props 3D answering a question that's come up over and over legitimately so that I don't think I've given a proper answer to. Uh, a lot of this is because the BlamCon project has evolved quite a bit over the last, oh, I guess we've been at this for a little over a year now, and there's been a lot of decisions made and changes made, etc., etc., but few more impactful than this. Why is BlamCon 6 pin now? and 8-pin before, and a lot of people think BlamCon is only 6-pin, and are like, what the heck is this 8-pin, because the conversation keeps going back and forth. Well, it's both, really, it just depends what you want to do, but the BlamCons we are offering on the BlamCon store, and the cables we are offering with our packages, yes, are only 6-pin. Why is this? Simply put, cost. We're trying to make BlamCon as affordable as possible. And frankly, the 8-pin, which is this here with the integrated uh, magnetic foot pedal, is just too expensive and time-consuming to make. Uh, let me show you. So this is the 8-pin. This is the 6-pin. I'll open this, this one first, this one second. Probably just held up the wrong hand there. So opening up an 8-pin. This is it here, and this is, sorry, not holding it up properly. There you go. And this is the metal magnetic quick detach foot pedal. So essentially, you have a magnetic mount here. You have the foot pedal here. Boop. There you go. This way, uh, and this is something I really insist upon because, you know, if you've got a foot pedal on your floor, a, it's a tripping hazard. You jump around. You kick into it. If it doesn't give, you're going to give. This way, boop, magnetically detaches. Also, I find myself rarely, if ever, even using a foot pedal. I actually added four uh, magnetic foot pedal switches hidden underneath the uh, front of my arcade, thinking I would just snap them on and snap them off. Never put them on. I, I don't know. Foot pedal's not big to me. I took a survey a while back and asked people how important foot pedals are, and it either came back not really, or I'll just use a USB foot pedal. And it's like, well, that's not that important to people anyway. These aren't cheap. These are real metal foot pedals. And this is the style I like, by the way, because a lot of foot pedals actuate at the back. So you have to step on it, which actually puts you a bit off balance. You really want one you can put your foot flat on the floor and just actuate from the front. So I had to find the right foot pedal that was very stable on rubber, that had a nice rubber pad that was metal. Yes, you can 3D fit print a foot pedal. Yes, I will at some point have a 3D printable foot pedal. I've already designed a couple, but when I was like, what is actually practical and sustainable, uh, these came to mind. So uh, I went with this. So that's cost number one, a metal foot pedal. Uh, number two, the real reason why not is this guy is very complicated to make. Um, this is a little project box and you see all the nice holes in here. I do this on my milling machine. I mill in, there is a 3D printed insert that I uh, epoxy inside and then inset the metal magnetic switches and magnetic switches are not cheap within themselves. So I found on average, this one would take me about 40 minutes of labor minimum to get this to a workable point. On top of the extra cost of the foot pedal, these magnetic plug or connectors are like five bucks each. So it added a lot of cost to something that basically almost nobody cared about. And there was a reasonable alternative, just get a USB pedal. So with that in mind, we went to six pen for our release. Why didn't we do both? It's confusing. There's already enough options. Um, and we have a lot more options even than what we listed in there. But, it, you know, we're a brand new system. We're already saying 3D print this. And there's a video here. And we've got the deluxe kit and the complete kit. And it just felt like now you have a 6-pin. Now you have an 8-pin. It would just, it was too much. But it does exist. So this 6-pin is this tiny little box here. It's just a glued 
two-piece thing. It's way easier to make. Actually, this is the current version that comes with the adapter. This is 2.5 and this is 2.1. All 12 volt adapters seem to be, uh, and pretty much every adapter, even up to 24, seems to be 2.1. So we're going to ditch this on the next version just to make it a little simpler. But essentially on both of these is the six pin and the eight pin on the other one, GX16 connector. So whatever connector you put on your Blamcon is what system it is. So to be honest, don't let me stop you. Do a six pin, do an eight pin. So the original design of the Viper did not have the foot pedal connected to the magazine pole to reload. It was actually connected to the A key. I like to have them two different things. The only time I really like it is in like time crisis when I can step on the pedal, right? To hide and then let go of the pedal to stand up and then I can set the magazine to reload. Um, there's also a whole bunch of auxiliary buttons on there around the joystick so you can wire it to whatever you want. That magazine was never originally wired to the foot pedal. It just came about, if I'm going to do six pin and it doesn't have a foot pedal, why not wire it to the foot pedal? So keep in mind with Blamcon 2, there's no hard and fast. It's whatever works best for you, right? Such as the joy of something you can make yourself. But in any of the Blamcon Vipers I am making, they are six pin for simplicity and cost. It's way cheaper if I do six pin and the magazine is wired to the foot pedal because if you have a USB foot pedal, it won't be conflated. And we have the assignable uh, function to uh, basically all of the keys with that independently. So that is why uh, we have six pin and eight pin. So for the DIY crowd, we have six and eight pin 3D models. I have a 3D model of both of these. Um, that's a DIY, including the mount for the magnetic uh, uh, foot pedal switch and everything. Those are coming soon and I will um, release them as I have time. I am still completely slammed, but I am catching up. So for the time being, you know, if you want to DIY your cable, just watch the video. You can see in the Viper build video where I wire the USB and the 12 volt onto the core. Um, just on the uh, get yourself a GX16 cable and wire those four wires to USB and the other two to 12 volt. You, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy DIY. If you want to know how to make your own cable from scratch, just wait a bit. I'll show you how to make a six pin an eight pin and both of their various breakout boxes. You know, it's, it's coming soon. Hours in a day aren't my friend right now, but I hope this has been a sufficient explanation of why Blamcon has both a six pin and an eight pin and why we have uh, sort of not talked much about the eight pin and only shown the six pin when it comes to the latter stages of this project. To be honest, the six pin didn't exist for 75% of Blamcon, so those have been in there from the beginning may be a little confused. So... There you go. Take care all.